Welcome to our weekly rankings video where Jim Coventry picks apart my carefully considered rankings and tears them to shreds. And he's usually right in the process. Let's jump right into uh, quarterbacks this week. Last week, Jim Coventry, you were right. I was too much of a Baker Mayfield skeptic. The Eagles got like one sack against Mayfield and he picked them apart. This week, they play Thursday night on the road at Atlanta. And you think it's more of the same. You think I'm just way too cautious on Baker Mayfield. Don't have him in my top 10. But you have been your top 13, and that's a fair enough ranking. I, I like that. I have been six. I'm real aggressive. I think that we have found out very definitively what weeks Baker Mayfield do fine and which weeks will be terrible. When there's pressure, he's terrible. When there's no pressure, he's fine. I know the Falcons brought in Matthew Judon. They have no pressure rate at all. They bring nothing. And therefore, it's no issue. The cornerbacks are good. Jesse Bates, the safety is good. But you got Mike Evans, you got Chris Godwin. They're schemed up so well. So basically, it's that simple. There's no pass rush coming this week. Baker Mayfield's going to have time. His left tackle's been great. His right tackle's missed the last two games, and he's been okay. But in the two games, Philadelphia and Washington, where Mayfield hasn't been pressured, he's averaging over 300 yards, three and a half combined touchdowns. The two games he saw pressure, Denver and Detroit, he's averaging about 170 yards, one touchdown. So that's just a drastic difference. Yeah, so I, I think it all comes down to can Judon and company put a little bit of pressure on Baker? Can the, the Bucks scheme quickly enough for the quick turnaround in the Thursday night game? I think that's the other thing. No Trey Palmer, most likely, in this one with a concussion. So he has down one weapon there. Uh, last week, we saw Sterling Shepard uh, make a couple of big catches. He's on the active roster for this team. Let's move to running back. Brian Robinson has been ripping it up for the Commanders sneakily good offensive line for the Washington Commanders so far. One of the things we looked into this season is thinking that they would have subpar run blocking. Mm -hmm. That has not been the case. They're running all over everybody. And I, I know Jaden Daniels unlocks a lot of this, but I think the line has actually been pretty good too. I've I've got a pretty optimistic rating on, uh, on, on Brian Robinson. Admittedly, a much tougher opponent in the Cleveland Browns this week than they've had the last two weeks against the Bengals and the run funnel Cardinals. Yeah, there's no doubt. And the third round pick Coleman, their interior offensive lineman, he was way better than anybody expected. Usually your third round lineman don't pan out, but a big part of their run game success. And yes, Brian Robinson has been playing great. But you do look Cincinnati, 16 carries for 33 yards, you know, two yards a catch, you know, move there. Uh, Tampa Bay back in week one, 12 carries for 40 yards. He goes off against the Giants and he clearly goes off against Arizona. No Austin Eckler certainly helped. Jeremy McNichols, of course, chipped in. But like you said, Arizona, Cincinnati, the Giants. Giants are a decent run defense, mm -hmm. but Cincinnati and Arizona are just catastrophic. It, yeah. it couldn't be worse. Browns are legitimately a top 10 run defense. They have better defensive line than many think. People just think Miles Garrett, but Dalvin Tomlinson on the inside. They do have other people that are helping. The linebackers are better. And I think also with Eckler likely back this week, that 21 carries goes back to about the 16 where it was. And I just think that in this game, a tough matchup. I think that the commanders are going to struggle to score this week. So I am a little bit lower at 18, but we're in a similar ballpark. Yeah. And, and it is a question of how much does Eckler get uh, coming back? He's coming back from a concussion. So it's not like a knee injury. He He's either in or he's out. They said he's likely going to be in the progress that made so far. The Cleveland injury list is not as bad as it's been in previous weeks, at least on the defensive side of the ball, uh, offensive side of the ball, still a nightmare there. I do worry about when, about Cleveland's defense, whether they're just going to be on the field a ton because mm -hmm. this Cleveland offense is just such a disaster right now. The offensive line is a disaster, and it's not, it doesn't stop there. Deshaun Watson individually has been a disaster so far again this year. Yeah, it's not been good. Uh, you know what? I'm, I'm going to say this, though, and you're right. I'm not going to argue this point. Watson's not a good quarterback, but the last two weeks, the line is so decimated. He actually is showing signs of being adequate like someone yeah. but the line is so bad that even those little improvements now they're not even looking like they're there i don't know if they're getting conklin back they didn't put him on the ir it's week four I, they need him back badly um mm -hmm. their their guard wyatt teller's out again i don't know if the um, the left tackle is going to be back yeah it, you're right it's, it's a bad situation so that said if they get a lead in this game you're right brian robinson cash is for you yeah Sticking with the commander's theme on wide receiver, Terry McLaurin, scary Terry. I've got him at 19. You've got him a bit, uh, a bit lower there. It's the pass rush. It's that Cleveland pass rush. And look, we, we last two weeks, McLaurin has great games. Arizona, no pass rush. 
Cincinnati, Trey Hendrickson left that game a little bit. He wasn't 100% in the game. There were some issues with him in that game, too. But they were getting no other rush other than him anyway. So, basically, right. it was a very easy pickings for well, Pickens, George Pickens. No George Pickens there. But downfield, Shasta McLaurin. This week's tougher. And I know that the – the Browns play a lot of man, but they have good corners. And there's not going to be, like, easy windows to throw. And, again, that pass rush is no joke, even though Miles Garrett's less than 100%. And I just think it's all that. Two beautiful matchups. Just remember against the Giants. Six catches for 22 yards. The Giants have a little pass rush. Tampa Bay, eh, not much of a rush, but two for 17. Those two games are still there. I know this team's getting better, but those two games still happen. And I just think it was too good of a setup the last two weeks. All right, fair enough. Uh, we're going to have a hearty discussion. What the heck do we do with Kyle Pitts and Mark Andrews? But first, again, remind you to smash that like button, subscribe button on this video. If you want to see more, you can also check out our rankings at Rotowire. Rotowire.com slash try gives you a free peek behind the paywall. No credit cards required, guys. We've been doing this for 20 years. We, we give you a real free trial, not one of those, oh, you're, you're going to forget to cancel and you're going to get your credit card hit. No, no credit card required at all. Rotowire.com slash try. All right, Jim, tight ends this week we have so many problem children but the two biggest problems out there are kyle pitts and mark andrews kyle pitts coming off a fresh bagel mark andrews one target dropped it bad drop too at that uh you know after the game uh, with the atlanta game raheem morris is like stats are for losers when asked about kyle pitts didn't like that as a response what are you doing with these two fine young gentlemen you know, it was interesting. Through three weeks, Kyle Pitts had three targets, then four, then five, and then back down to three in the goose egg. And we know he had the long catch. He just missed a touchdown in week three. We know he was interfered in the end zone against Kansas City, which they didn't call because Chiefs were on national TV and they got to win that game. You know how that goes. Uh, he did score in week one. You're holding him. What Are you going to really grab somebody off of waivers and take a shot? Maybe. But... Pitts does have at least five PPR points in three games, and that's better than some of these other tight ends had been doing. So I think you give him one more week. I know it's not easy to do it after a goose egg, bagel, as you called it. He's not, the upside's not going to be there. That's Ray Ray McLeod is the problem. Ray Ray McLeod's yeah. been 95% of the snaps is a full time slot. We thought going into the season that Zach Robinson would weaponize Pitts as more of a pseudo receiver. Just make him a slot receiver. Forget him as a tight end. He doesn't, he can't block anyway, but they're not doing that. And I think that's the bigger red flag than Pitts not producing. Pitts has very little ceiling and he has a little bit of a floor because he's getting some targets. But, but what are your thoughts, Jeff? He's getting, if you look at like the advanced uh, metrics, he's getting very little separation. Mm -hmm. um, he, he's not getting first look because of that. Um, I am benching pits in some leagues this week. I, I'm going to, I'm going to start K Dotton, his opponent on Thursday yes. night ahead of him. Got nine targets last week. I'm mm -hmm. going to start Tucker Craft ahead of Kyle Pitts this week. I'm also going to do the same with Mark Andrews. If I have Mark yeah. Andrews, I'm going to bench him this week. In neither case, am I going to cut the player because there's just too much there. That's been in the past, but hey, we're in bye weeks. We may not have that luxury soon enough, uh, but I, I just can't keep taking zeros either. I, something has to be done. You're right. So in week one, I gave Andrews a pass because he's coming off the car accident, right? And he hadn't yeah. practiced. So by two for 14, two targets. All right. Likely gets 12 targets, whatever. Week two, there were signs of life. Andrews goes four for 51 on five targets. That's a good yeah. stat line for a tight end. We'll take sure. it. And then what happened was the first two weeks, I was screaming from the mountaintops. The Ravens season is going to circle the drain if they're keeping Patrick Ricard off the field, their fullback. He was playing 22% of the snaps. Well, John Harbaugh saw the same thing I saw, and I'm sure he got in Munkin's face because all of a sudden now Ricard's playing half the snaps. What does that mean? The running game is going for over 250 yards a game in the last two games. And what does that mean? Lamar Jackson, 15 pass attempts and 18 last week. Of those 18 last week, nine went to running backs. That means there is nothing for anybody. So what ultimately happens, and like you said, Jeff, if the bye week's coming, you got to drop them. You might have to. Eventually, the running game's going to be so good, they're going to be able to create balance off of that. But you might have to wait four or five weeks for that to happen. Yep. I am starting Cole Komet, Tucker Craft. K. Dotton all ahead uh, of these two tight ends this week. I, I, I don't have to drop them yet, but man, it, it's getting tough on those streets.